let us kneel down before you in your presence Lord worship help me say
once again. Amen. Oh, it's just a blessing to be able to walk and talk and praise and glorify the Lord. We brought us here for that purpose and that purpose only. We thank God for it. Now we're going to be favored with our welcome and our announcements. Let us all say Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his prayer shall continually be in my mind. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. We thank God for you coming in that we may exalt the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Christ together this morning. Amen. We thank God for all of our visitors and all of our members who have come out uh, and to worship and to fellowship together in the body of Christ. Amen. Mother Adam, you know that you are always welcome Amen. to Little Dallas right there. That's the brand of you all. Uh, you are always welcome to come to church with me today. Uh, we just want you to know that you are welcome today and always. For those of you out there in virtual land, uh, just know too that you are always welcome to come into the building to fellowship with us in person. Amen. I have a few announcements and I'm going to do Pastor Dom's and he says we will resume our virtual Bible study on Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. We will continue our study in the book of Hebrews. We are invited to celebrate the installation of Pastor C.W. Parker at Friendship Baptist Church in Merced this coming Friday, March 15th at 7 p.m. The address is 668 South, no, 668 S Street in Merced. All those who are able are encouraged and invited to attend. Amen. On next Sunday, next Sunday, we will fellowship with the El Bethel Baptist Church for their 75th church's anniversary at 3 p.m. They will be serving lunch after morning worship starting at 1 p.m. We're asking all who can to help us celebrate the Lord with them. Uh, Pastor Damon White will be bringing the message that day. Sister Cook, you, you didn't hear that part. But uh, we are just invited as guests. On the fourth Sunday of March, fourth Sunday, which is Palm Sunday, we will start a fellowship tradition with the Second Union Baptist Church of San Francisco. This year, we will worship with them during morning worship at 11 a.m. Please invite all family and friends to join us that Sunday at Second Union Baptist Church at 749 Page Street in San Francisco. I can text it to you. No. Okay, Sister Cook, Pastor Dom out there in virtual land, wants it in writing. He, he got your message. <laughs> Birthday to Brother Rashid Wallace. Who, oh, I keep saying Wallace. <laughs> Rashid Loveless. I'm looking right at his neck. Rashid Loveless. Loveless. Rashid, happy birthday. He's going to be celebrating his birthday on the 13th of this month. And we have a thank you card from our own sister Dorothy Strickland. And it says, Dear Emmanuel Pearlgate, I want to thank you for the wonderful birthday blessings. That prayer plan is really something. You give it a little water and it starts praying. <laughs> now, if it starts singing, I'm sure gonna let y'all know. <laughs> a sincere thanks and God bless each of you, Sister Dorothy Strickland. We are also asking that you can continue to pray for those of us on our sick and shut-in list. Uh, just to let you know, Sister Cam Grant is out of ICU, but she still is in the hospital. And we ask that you continue to keep her in your prayers. Pray for Sister Gillis, who is still under the weather, but we are so happy to see you today, Mother. Uh, continue to pray for all those on our sick and shut in list, which is all of us. Uh, Sister Egypt Gates, Sister Brenda Barnes, Sister Dorothy Strickland, Brother Gideon Love, Sister Glennis Bailey, Kiara Malone. And continue to pray for Brother John and Brother Curtis, who we haven't seen for uh, several weeks and just keep them in your prayers. Amen. Uh, Dr. Davis wasn't here. Dr. Davis, see, I can't say that right. Dr. Gibson wasn't <laughs> here. <laughs> we wish you a happy birthday. Our birthday is on the 23rd. And we uh, wish you a very, very happy birthday. Uh, we ask you to continue to pray for each other.
another am for all of us that God might continue to bless, that God might continue to heal, that God might continue to be with us every day of our lives. Amen. 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 Let us all say amen. Amen. Y'all shall not pray for me. I really need to get a prayer. We thank the Lord for him praying us here. Amen. I'm here on the praise of God. Amen. And we just thank God that he has given us this another opportunity to glorify and magnify his name. Thank all of you for being here as well. Now as we continue on in our service, we continue in our, our giving. Uh, I want to read from Malachi once again, from the word of God which states, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house, and try me now then this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there not be room enough to receive. We're gonna ask, uh, uh, so let's see who could, uh, uh, let, us, let us receive our offering now. Amen. 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 <laughs> No. 
chapter once again to, to, to hear his word. His word will be brought to us today by Reverend Dante. We're going to ask you to hear him after the choir sing one more song. If you will. We will. The voice you hear will be that of Reverend Dante. All right. Come on.
and destroy with the splendor of his coming. Verse 9, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance to how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie. Verse 10, and all the ways, excuse me, and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing, they perish because they refuse to love the truth and be saved. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Restraint against lawlessness will be removed, and the man of lawlessness will be revealed. The implication is that God will stop to some extent holding back evil and allow sin freer reign on earth. This mysterious figure, the man of lawlessness, who opposes all worship except the worship of himself, in part this means sitting in the temple and declaring that he is God himself, empowered by Satan. This figure will deceive unbelievers by showing signs and wonders. Amen? However, at his second coming, Jesus will destroy the man of lawlessness and all who refuse, to tr uh, refuse the truth, which is the Bible, and took pleasure in unrighteousness. Amen? The Bible has a lot to say about the end times. Nearly every book of the Bible contains prophecy regarding the end times. Scripture tells us that Christ will remove all born-again believers from the earth in the in the event known as the rapture. You can find this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18, or 1 Corinthians. If you guys want to, you can take out a pen and write the scriptures down, or if not, look back on it later and you can get the scriptures. There's going to be a lot of scriptures that I'm going to share with you. But my mom always told me, if somebody shows you something in the Bible and they, or tell you something about the Bible and they don't show you, don't believe it. And at the time, it was right after Jim Jones had did we did. So it was always a thing with me to make sure I give you an address so you can always go back and research yourself. Not only that, because the Holy Spirit is who reveals to you, right? So even though I might be sharing something, he'll give you something. But when you get in there personally, he'll give you more. That's the reason why I give you addresses. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> um, okay, okay. So I'll make it back up. At the judgment seat of Christ, these believers will be revealed. Excuse me, excuse me. Scripture tells us that Christ will remove all born-again believers from the earth in the event known as the rapture. At the judgment seat of Christ, these believers will be rewarded for good works and faithful works and faithful service during their time here on earth. Or they will lose reward for lack of service and obedience. And you can find it in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11 through 15, or 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Amen? The Antichrist, the beast, will come into power and will sign a covenant with Israel for seven years. That's in uh, Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. This seven-year period will, excuse me, this seven-year period of time is known as the tribulation. During the tribulation, there will be terrible wars, famines, plagues, and natural disasters. God will be pouring out his wrath against sin, evil, and wickedness. The tribulation will include the appearance of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, the seven seal, the trumpet, and the bowls of judgment. About halfway through the seven years, the Antichrist will break the peace covenant with, with Israel and make war against it. The Antichrist will commit the abomination of desolation and set up an image of himself to be worshipped in the Jerusalem temple. You'll see that in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 3 through 10, which, which will have been re rebuilt. The temple will have been rebuilt. It already has been rebuilt back in the days, but anyway. The second half of the tribulation is known as the Great Tribulation in Revelation 7, chapter 7, verse 14. And, the and it's also called the time of Jacob's trouble in Jeremiah 30, verse 7. At the end of the seven-year tribulation, the Antichrist will launch a final attack on Jerusalem, culminating in the battle of Armageddon, Jesus will return, destroy the Antichrist and his armies, and cast them into the lake of fire. That's in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 uh, through 21. Christ will then bind Satan in the abyss for 1,000 years, and he will rule his earthly kingdom for this 1,000 period. That's in Revelation 20, 16. Revelation chapter 20, excuse me, verse 1 through 6. Revelation 20, 1 through 6. At the end of the thousand years, Satan will be released and defeated again and cast into the lake of fire for eternity. Revelation 20, 17, excuse me, Revelation chapter 20, verse 7 through 10.
Christ will then usher in a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem, the eternal dwelling place of the believers. There will be no more sin, sorrow, or death. That's in Revelation chapter 21 through 22. And because it's so long, I'm going to read it just because it is that important. Revelation chapter 21, starting at verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more mourning, and no more crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Amen? Verse 5. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Amen. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Sidebar. When you prayed this morning, it was blessed. You said, Lord, give us water. And I thought about this scripture where the Lord said, I will, he who is thirsty, come to me and I will give you water from the spring of life that, that you thirst no more. Amen. And here it is in the scripture here. God put that in my heart like he always does. Amen. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all of this. And I will be their God. And they will be my children, says God. Verse 8. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magical arts, the idolaters and all liars will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Verse 9. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain, great and high, and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as a crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and the twelve gates, and twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold and measured the city, its gates and walls. The city was laid out like a square as long as it is wide. He measured the city with a rod and found it to be 12,000 um, stadia in length, as, it, as wide as it, as it is long. The angel measured the wall using human measurement, and it was 144 cubits thick. The wall was made of jasper and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundation of the city's walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh crystallite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth was turquoise, the eleventh was jansink, the twelfth was I, mean, I can't pronounce that. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street, excuse me, the great street of the city of gold. The great city of the street of gold, as pure as transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty are its temple, and the Lamb is its temple. The city does not need the sun nor the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God gives it light. And the Lamb is its temple. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. No one, no one, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. on no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nation will, brought in, will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will, anything, will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Verse 22, the angel showed me 
the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, following from the throne of God and the Lamb, down the middle of the great city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing crops, twelve crops full, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him, which is Christ. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. There will be no need of light or light or the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever. Amen? The angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord God who inspires the prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things that must take place soon. Amen? Look, I am coming soon, is God. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy that are written in this scroll. I, John, am the one who heard these sayings. And when I heard them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing me these things. And he said, do not do that, for I'm your fellow servant with your fellow prophets. And all of us who keep the words and the scroll of God, worship God only. Then he told me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of the scroll because the time is near. Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the vile person continue to be vile. Yeah. Let the one who does right continue to do right, and let the holy person continue to be holy. Right. Verse 12, look, I am coming soon, says God, says Jesus. I am coming soon, and my reward is with me, and I will give to each one according to what he has done. Well, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Yes, Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to them tree of life and they go through the gates into the city. Outside are dogs and those who practice magical arts, sexually immoral, the murderers, idolaters, and everyone who loves to practice falsehood. Right. Verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angels to give you this testimony to the church. For this testimony, for the testimony, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride says, come. And let him who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty, come. Let the one who wishes to take free the gift of water of life, come. Amen. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues that are written in this scroll. And if anyone takes away from the words that are written in this prophecy, God will take away that person any share from the tree of the knowledge of life, from the share of the tree of knowledge of life, and in the holy city which are described in this scroll, he who testifies said, "Yes, I am coming soon. Even so, Lord, come." Amen. Amen. I know that uh, I did a lot of reading on this because, uh, as I said earlier, I'm going to give you the scripture and let the Lord reveal it more to you. I could have went more in depth than I planned, but I know I'm kind of short. But I just want you guys to pay attention to the fact, and us too, and myself too, the fact that, man, if we look at the things that the Lord said, he said, look for these things, these things take place, and this means that the time is near. We have to be careful and be mindful, because the Lord said earlier that the church will be raptured. In the scriptures, it says two will be in the field, one will be taken away, one will be left. What's going to happen, as we already know, is it's going to happen. We're not going to know. Because if everybody knows, everybody will live however they want to know. He's going to come in about two minutes. Let me get my life right. It's not going to happen like that. He's not going to give you no head. He's giving us a head up now. So we need to be ready, be prepared. And as well as that, too, I'm going to share this, too. Knowing that, knowing the time, if you have somebody that you deal with, a friend, co-worker, or somebody that you really, really like, don't worry about how they feel. Ask them, do they know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? All right. You know, um, where I work at, I'm, I'm in a department of my job where we're dealing with hospice, people that are on the last leg, they're dying, and people that are really uh, terminally ill. And, of course, we already know that uh, court and state or whatever, you're not supposed to mention God or whatever because that's your personal faith and other people believe in other things. I still have to. I, I, when they don't need me, I'd be like, man, look, I know I'm supposed to ask you this, but do you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior? I do. Because I feel like this here, and this is for all of us, right? It's like, um, you know, God said, he's going to say, what did you do with my son? You feel me? So I feel like, how would I feel walking up, oh, Lord, I'm so happy I made it in. But you're going to say, well, what about these dudes that I put in your area for you to evangelize to, and you didn't? Wow. You know what that scripture is? That's a scripture where uh, one of the first ones I preached here when they talked about the talents. And the one guy took the talent and buried it, and the other two, one took it and 
confessed it and made five more of them, made three more, but one buried it. That's talking about what are you doing with your salvation? Yeah, you're covered in the blood. You're good. When the rapture comes, you're gone. But what about your neighbor? What about the dude, the person you see at work every day and you didn't even mention Jesus? You say them? No. Are you nervous about what they might feel? Yeah, nine times out of ten, that's what it is. But here's the thing, too. I'm going to share this again. The pastor was saying to me one time, he said, what if you was driving down the road or you came walking from down the road, right? And it's a bridge, but a big chunk of the bridge is out. You didn't pass it. You're like two miles, about a mile ahead, and you see your best friend come flying down the road. You're going to do like this and let him keep driving? Or you're going to say, hey, hold on, hold on, man, the bridge out, the bridge out. Don't keep going, bro. The bridge is out. Right. right? Well, that's what we're supposed to do. Hey, hey, brother, he coming, bro. I know you might think I'm crazy. You might think I'm a Jesus freak. I'll accept that because I am a Jesus freak. Wow. But God is coming back. I talk to you every day. I like you as my friend. I say you my partner. Then why not tell you about Jesus? Whether you accept it or not, I did my job. You feel me? That's what we have to do. We just have to be ready to just share it. Let them deal with it. Because remember, Isaiah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So shall my word that goes forth from my mouth. This is God. It will not return to me void, but it will accomplish what I send it out to do, and it will prosper in the things for which I send it. Again. Very literal, so I go back to it and I look at the first part. So shall my word. Okay, wait a minute. I thought that was me talking to, to uh, the book. No, okay. that's God. He says, so shall my word. It. it will not return to me. So again, let's go back to return. Return means it's been sent from somewhere. So that's just not me sharing that then. That's God. Amen. Right. So shall my word that comes from my mouth. So that didn't come from Dante. That said, maybe I should go talk to this person. That's God saying Go talk to this person. And he said, it will not return to me void, which means empty, but it will prosper. That means grow, of course, in which I send it. And it will prosper in the things for which I send it. So my job is to, hey, here, here's the word. You do what you want with it, but I did my job. I love you. I'm going to pray for you. And then I know this too. Remember this too. If you share scripture with somebody, what we do is we look for our response. Don't look for a response. Apostle Paul said, I get out, I planted Paul, uh, Paul, uh, Apostle, uh, I'm talking fast, Apollo water, and God gave the increase, right? Just get the word, because it ain't going to return void. Even if you think they don't want to hear it, he said, my word is sharper than the two-edged sword, piercing through the nerves into the soul, right? So we don't have to worry about it. It ain't nothing too hard. Just give him the word and then pray about it. The part of watering, the part of watering that word is praying. So when you give somebody something, don't worry about it. Boss don't want to hear that, whatever. Go in and pray. In your prayer closet, in your prayer room, when you're driving to work, or wherever you have your prayer closet, your prayer time, lift that person up. And then watch what God do. Because not only is God going to bless that person for them, He's going to do it for you. Because you're going to be strong. And then you're going to know it ain't nothing I can do if I just trust God. Amen? Amen. 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 Father Yahweh, how excellent is your name in all earth. Amen? And now at this time, I'd like the time to extend the offer of salvation to those who may not know Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. It is a free gift, and all you have to do is admit to God that you are a sinner in need of repentance. Amen? And you are in the need of grace, of the grace of God, and that you are lost without Him. You must be willing to turn from your sins. Amen? Believe that Jesus, you must be willing to believe that Jesus Christ came to this world to give his life on the cross for the part of our sins because we could not pay that debt. Amen? Because we're not righteous enough to pay that debt, right? That's why Jesus Christ came down from glory. He was in glory. He didn't have to come on down here. He came down from glory and gave his life as a ransom for us. Amen? That we might have salvation through his death, burial, and resurrection. And you must believe that he rose up out of the grave with all power and glory on the third day. Amen? Because the grave could not hold him, you must believe that he is seated right now at the right hand of the Father in glory. Amen? Now, if you believe this and you want the free gift of salvation, I'm going to ask you to please play this prayer. Please pray this prayer with me. I talk too fast. Dear God, I know and acknowledge that I'm a sinner and that I am lost without you. And I now ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you, Jesus, Excuse me. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. And I believe that he died on the cross for my sins and the sins of the world. And I believe that you, Father, raised him back to, back to life with all power and glory. 
I want to trust him as my Lord and Savior from this day forward. Guide my life. Help me to do your will. I pray this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? If you just prayed this prayer with me, I'd like to personally welcome you into the family of God. And I would encourage you to get into a Bible-based church and surround yourself with Christ-minded people who can help you stay focused on the things of God. Amen? And I want to also remind you again of what was just said today. Be mindful. Be uh, what's going on. You guys see what's going on over there in Palestine. Y'all see what's going on over there in Russia. And we hear about these wars and these rumors of wars. And we see what's going on over there everywhere. It's wars and stuff is going on. One of the things that uh, this sign, I, I didn't put in here, but it talks about the three witnesses at the uh, well at the wall in Jerusalem. They're going to be killed and be rose again. It's a whole bunch of signs that we are to look for. I gave you guys scripture to look back on it because as he said, that Jesus said, when you look around and see the, bright, the leaves are brown, you know that the summer is near. Also look around and look at the signs of the time to know that the end is near. So just be ready, you guys. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, Lord, I said what you told me to say, and I gave the message that you gave me to give. Now, Lord, I pray this will be a blessing to someone, and I pray that somebody's life will be changed so that you will receive all glory, honor, and praise, Father. We love you and praise you, and it is in the mighty and the matchless name of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys mind standing up? Let's stand up and let's just sing a song of praise to the Lord. Amen.
Yes, Lord, one more chance. I thank God. Amen? Amen. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I used to thank God for one more chance on these streets. Amen? And he gave me one more chance, and I'm doing the best that I can. Amen? Amen. Raise your right hand with me. And now may the grace of God and the love of Jesus and the and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide, hence now forever to do God's will and all of God's saints say, Amen.